Hi, I'm Reese Hugel from Don Zorko Brewery in Leith, Scotland. Uh, I'm, I'm the owner and the, the head brewer, and we make uh, lagers mainly in, 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 in Scotland, uh, focused on unfiltered lagers, kind of Franconian style lagers, and just hoppy, delicious, foamy beer, which is what we're kind of known for. There's only two of us in the brewery. There's me, who's the, the owner and the head brewer, and then there's my, my friend Craig, who works as the head of sales, and that is the whole team, two people. Uh, Yes, I look after the production and yeah, we like making hoppy lagers, unfiltered lagers and just nice, easy going, delicious beers. Uh, where, when did you start and why? Uh, we started in 2017, 20, yeah, late, late 2017. Um, I just finished university, I was a home brewer. Uh, I got some money from university to start the brewery. Uh, and I was living in Germany prior to that. I'm really interested in the small breweries in Germany making uh, unfiltered lagers, making hoppy lagers, and kind of lager is kind of is different to the big Munich breweries or traditional lager we have in the UK, which is usually like a consumer, like very uh, bland, very easy going. So it's a bit, a bit more challenging, a lot more flavor, and so it represents like a. Uh, a real a real difference in, in kind of the lager category something which is a bit more for a bit more like yeah flavorsome a bit more uh, kind of maybe challenging to a lager drinker but is ultimately really delicious and can can be enjoyed by anyone it's not not like a, some craft beers which are like to certain markets usually most people can enjoy a delicious lager and it's about me finding that like space where easygoing delicious lager but with enough flavor and enough kind of complexity to it where you can think about it and you can have a, but you can still drink a few of them. Craft breweries, when they were starting, they tended to shy away from the lager styles. Well, there was the expense, there was the time, but, but, and there was the technique. And, and really now, this is kind of the year of the lager, would you say? I, 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 I think what's, diff, what's been difficult for craft brewers is, is that if you have um, a certain budget to make a beer, and every of your consumers used to drinking lager beers, uh, commercial macro lager beers, you can make a parallel which tastes way different to that lager and you can see, okay, the extra maybe you know, two or three euros on the beer is worth it because it tastes so different and I can't get this elsewhere. Brewing a lager, the difference between uh, a generic consumer pills and a craft brewed, like really delicious lager is smaller. It's still, it's still there, it's still important, but it is smaller. So like the gap is smaller so trying to convince you, the consumer that it's worth the money is a harder job but as soon as they try a really well-made lager a lot of breweries in the last few years have been trying to make lager but using it as like a oh we've got a tap room now we have to brew a lager and doing like a an okay job but not many breweries are focused on doing lagers and making it their whole their whole shtick and that's where kind of we focused on and trying to make it our signature is brewing really good clean and filtered lager uh, that is different enough that it's worth the extra money because it's more expensive it's a small brewery but also it's accessible to everyone and the parents like everyone can enjoy it like that's kind of our mission stem I guess what's your production level per year right now and where do you hope to go I guess it's growth uh, our, 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 our brewery is quite small so we will only brew just under a thousand hectoliters a year and then we're hoping to grow that to maybe two to two and a half but with in the future, we're looking to maybe have a tap room, more of an on-site uh, experience direct to consumer, so we can keep making the same quality beer at the same level, but make more money through direct to consumer sales. At the end of the day, the public will get it cheaper. We can make a bit more money. We can reinvest in the business. And that's where we hope to be going forwards, not to be a massive production brewery, but still remain small, but have people coming to us, drinking our beers, and, and, and having it at the source, which is kind of the dream, right? Uh, I hope, yeah, in the next couple of years, that'll be that'll be signed. That'll be a production model going forward. That's the current plan. Uh, yeah. And are you still having fun going from garage to brewery, and I guess learning the business? Yeah, it's been a big learning curve, learning to brew commercially. Um, kind of every day, every day as a school, there's a lot of people who know a lot more than me. Learning from those people, doing collaborations with those people, and then kind of owning my own skills to make the beer I want to make better which is what it's all about like if you think you know a lot of things probably probably wrong <laughs> i think everyone is is the beginner in their own thing and yeah every day is a school day learning things uh from how to run the business to to production methods to to processing methods 
everyone knows more than you and that's I think if you don't have that attitude you're destined to fail because yeah no one knows everything so excellent well thank you so much for taking the time to talk to the beer idiots cheers thank you cheers